This man, Hugh Foley Whittingstall, is going to attempt to beat me with his chocolate chestnut cake. No chance. You reckon? And um, what are you doing exactly? I'm going to do a, a, a nice gooey chocolate and chestnut cake. Nice. It should be quite soft and moussey in the middle. Okay. It's one of the things you could, you could literally eat it straight out of the oven as a, as a kind of hot chocolate pudding. Yeah, good. And it'll, you won't even manage to slice it, you just have to scoop it out. Oh, nice. Good luck. Good luck. So I'm doing a very simple, straightforward chocolate tart. No frills, no spills, no creme fraiche, no vanilla chocolate tart with roasted hazelnuts. Um, we're going to make uh, the most amazing pastry, um, roll it out, line it in this um, flan ring, put the cream and the milk on to boil, add that to my little chocolate buttons. There's a very well-known Elizabeth David chocolate cake that uses ground almonds instead of flour and keeps it lovely and moist and quite fudgy in the middle. This is really based on that, except I'm just using chestnuts cooked in a little cream and milk, mashed instead of the ground almonds. But really, it's a tribute to, to her recipe. But it's lovely at Christmas because it's got the chestnuts in. Milk, cream up to the ball, hazelnut praline on top of the chocolate buttons, and then, quite simply, cream and milk onto the chocolate and stir away. Now, the thickening agent of this particular tart are whole eggs. And what the egg does is, as the cream and the chocolate and the milk cook, of course, the eggs help to set it. Lightly whisk up the eggs and fold that in to the chocolate. Now, I'm just going to lightly toast my nuts. Now, Hugh, you're highly competitive, aren't you? Even though you're living in the countryside, you still have that chef's competitive streak in you, don't you? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I like to win, Gordon. Whoa. No, it's all right. You thought it had all gone horribly wrong for me there, didn't you? I was hoping it had, you know that, yeah. Hugh. I'd get fired from your kitchen so far. <laughs> when I look at my part, look at that. Look at <laughs> Oh, my God. Does that actually bring you out in a sweat? I'd be getting clipped round the head if this was... What? I probably am about to be clipped what? by the head. Weren't you fired from the River Cafe for being a messy puppy? Yes. yes. In a word, yes. Pit in the heck. There we go. We're baking the tart blind. That means we're going to line this ring with a pastry and then bake that off first. So that's an added insurance policy that, A, the pastry stays nice and crisp, and, B, all we have to do then is just cook the chocolate filling. So baking blind simply means cooking it twice. Do you miss not being a professional chef running a restaurant full-time? Uh, I don't miss it at all, cos I, no? I was quite a bad professional chef. Really? I just, you know, I have... A bit like Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got the discipline. But what, what I do now, I, I enjoy very much. You know, it, yep. what we do in Dorset isn't really a restaurant. It's more informal than that. It's about telling people where the food comes from. I have a great kitchen team, but it's sort of more of a cookery school than a restaurant. Uh -huh. and, um, and did you have long, straggly hair at the River Cafe? I've always had long, straggly hair. How many times a year do you wash it? I think I'm due for about once a month. Seasonal? Seasonal. Did you have to wear a hair nap? I could be due for my pre-Christmas wash any day now. You're distracting me and you're making me over-whip the egg whites. <laughs> the thing about folding in egg whites is never fold more than you need to, but you do have to get it properly incorporated, which means going deep to the bottom of the bowl and just lifting the mix, and that's it. And in it goes. And that just goes in there for 25 minutes. The really important not to overcook it so that you don't want it to dry out. So, out. Nuts, sprinkle the nuts at the bottom, chocolate in. It does look very good. We don't fill the tart right to the very top here. Two thirds of the way in, open the oven door, and then get the rest of your mixture and top up the tart. Uh, so that's so you don't have to carry a really full tart over exactly. to the oven. Exactly. So it gets really nice and full. That, that's obviously a very useful tip for chefs who've been drinking too much on Christmas Day. Absolutely. Oh, shit. Are you OK? Yeah, I just went in to have a little look and I dropped the cloth. You see, that's why I got fired. Things like that. I dropped the cloth in the middle of my cake. I hope that's a clean one. Now it's all down to fucking Sharon Osbourne, you know that. And, you know, I've got, for the first time in the F-Word series, a proper chef in my kitchen. So well, if there's any time well, now that I really want to win, it's fucking today, Hugh. That's, that's very kind of you to describe me as a chef. Mine's in the oven now. It's got to go in there at 90 degrees for an hour and 10 to an hour and 15 minutes. So it cooks nice and slowly. We can't afford to turn it up any higher than 90, 95 degrees, otherwise it splits and separates. And I'm right. damned if I'm going to lose this challenge. Look at that. 
suddenly all your confidence is just sapping away. <laughs> Mr Whittingstall, it does look rather yummy, that. You know that. I'm slightly concerned that it looks too fucking good.